If I'd have done all the things I was supposed to have done, I'd be really tired. <laughs> Tucked away in the sprawling stretch of earth known as Texas Hill Country, you'll find the longtime home of country music superstar and quite possibly the world's oldest cannabis connoisseur, Willie Nelson. Known as Luck Ranch, this is Willie Nelson's very own backyard, a location that he's shared with a whole host of his closest friends, family, and fans for over a decade now. But before I get into all the details on how you can experience Willie Nelson's home turf for yourself, let's take a look at how this place came to be. Located in the unincorporated community of Spicewood, Texas, Luck Ranch was originally built on an area of land that Willie already owned come the mid 80s. At that time, Willie was adapting his 1975 album Red Headed Stranger into a feature film starring himself and Morgan Fairchild and decided to finally do the one thing he had always dreamed of doing since the time he was a small child, namely own his very own western frontier town. Now, the original script actually called for all the buildings in the town to burn down at the very end of the film, but Willie decided that he loved the place so much that he called an audible on the ending, changing it so that the town survives and ensuring that the sets would all still be left standing when the cameras stopped rolling. Following the release of that film, Willie would keep the entire town of Luck Ranch on his property for the next few decades, where the rustic warmth of its leftover buildings would serve as a gathering spot for the occasional late night jam session with a few famous friends. And whenever anyone stops by for a visit, Willie's always there to greet them with this oldie but a goodie, telling his guests, when you're here, you're in luck and when you're not, you're out of luck. That's some classic pothead humor for you right there. Now, despite Willie's willingness to be an open book when it comes to discussing his music or his passion for smoking green, the one thing Willie never really liked to talk all that much about is his home life. In that sense, details on the actual residence located on this property are very hard to come by. What I can tell you is that the main house is said to boast four bedrooms, four bathrooms, and somewhere around 13,691 square feet of space in the inside. It's also believed to have been built a couple of years prior to Luck Ranch's construction and boasts amenities like a swimming pool as well as a massive enclosure for Willie's incredible number of rescue horses. In fact, all across his 700 acre ranch, Willie has adopted somewhere around 70 horses, rescuing a variety of them from horrific circumstances and keeping them from winding up in slaughterhouses by allowing them to roam the grounds of his ranch freely. When asked to comment on his relationship with the animals, Willie would tell an ABC News affiliate, My horses are probably the luckiest horses in the world. They get hand fed twice a day, and they were just ready to go to slaughter is probably the last thing they remembered, so they're happy horses. After establishing his property as a safe haven for both himself and a boatload of animals, Willie opened up his estate to his fan base as well. Starting around 2012, Willie threw open the doors of Luck Ranch by hosting a yearly festival known as the Heartbreaker Banquet. Eventually, the Heartbreaker Banquet would transform into something we know now as the Luck Family Reunion, an event that's held each spring to coincide with the South by Southwest Music Festival, and one that usually sells out long before the lineup for the event is even announced. Over the next decade, this festival would prove to be so popular that in the coming weeks, Willie has decided to create a brand new event, this one taking place in the fall and being dubbed Luck Talk. Oktoberfest. While the springtime reunions are more about fostering a community of musical artists, this new festival will be about celebrating the Texas community that Willie has been a part of for so long. The plan is for this to be a much more informal affair, but with a whole lot going on, including a carnival, beer hall, outdoor music performances, a masquerade ball, and a fashion show. In fact, rumors suggest there's even gonna be a golf tournament as well. Wait, a golf tournament? Wherever will Willie host that? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Pedernales Country Club in Spicewood, Texas might not be the town's nicest golf course. Apparently that distinction is held for the nearby Austin Golf Club, but it's certainly the only one owned by a living legend. I'm talking about Shotgun Willie himself. Willie bought this nine hole course located about 30 miles northwest of Austin in 1979 for a reported $250,000. At the time, the course was already a little over 10 years old and had fallen into some deep economic trouble, so Willie bailed out its original owners and took the place over, joking at the time he made the purchase that, I've always wanted a golf course where I could set the pars. 
Well, as his first order of business, Willie would change the club's name from Briarcliff Yacht and Golf Club to the Pedernales Country Club, in order of the Colorado River tributary that it sits on. Despite its new name, out went those country club vibes and it came something a little more suited to a country musician's taste when Willie turned the club's restaurant into a recording studio. This is actually where he wound up producing his classic studio album, Poncho and Lefty, alongside Merle Haggard in 1983. Unfortunately, Willie would briefly lose ownership of the club during his very public battle with the IRS in 91. Thankfully, with the help of a friend, Willie managed to buy the club back a year later. Today, Pedernales is open for daily play while boasting some very on-brand and tongue-in-cheek rules to play by. Like, one, no more than 12 in your foursome, and two, don't be an a-hole. But as much of a lasting imprint as Willie is clearly left on this Texas community, it's not the only home he owns. To find out where else Willie likes to rest his weary and big Ted at night, we're gonna have to head to the island of Hawaii. While most of Willie Nelson's fans know that he's been a longtime resident of Hawaii, finding out exactly where he lives on the island has been tricky to pinpoint. As already mentioned, Willie is very private, and he's done his level best to keep his home on the north shore of Maui as much of a secret as he possibly can. That being said, it's believed that Willie's house was first built in 1935 on a property of land that measures in at just under one acre, while being located located only steps away from the nearby beach, boasting an estimated six bedrooms and six bathrooms, as well as a swimming pool tucked into the very middle of the property, Willie would purchase this 6,000 square foot home in 1983 for somewhere around $450,000. It's believed that the country music icon has since split his time between his homes in Texas and Maui, but historically speaking, this is where Nelson has hosted some pretty high stakes poker games over the years. These include ones with famous friends like Owen Wilson and Woody Harrelson. Other additions that Willie has been said to have made to his home here include a solar powered water system, the planting of mango avocado avocado and papaya trees, as well as yet another nine hole golf course. Last but certainly not least, I figured we could check out one last spot where Willie has spent a big amount of his time. His epic tour bus, nicknamed the Me and Paul Bus after Willie's family band drummer, the recently deceased Paul English. Originally built in 1983, this massive mode of transportation has played host to Nelson and his fellow bandmates for years, after Willie bought it in 2014 for $100,000 from a pair of Austin, Texas locals. While it might not look like much on the outside, it's got everything it needs inside to make Willie and his pals feel right at home. Stepping foot onto the tour bus, you'll immediately be greeted by a funky purple interior. And a little bit further inside, things begin to reflect Willie's unique sense of style a whole lot more. Like with this spacious lounge area that boasts two very comfy looking bench seats that stretch the entire length of the space and a design quirk meant to replicate the feel of a wagon from the old west. Just off from this lounge area is a door that leads directly into the bunks, which is where Nelson and his band members sleep on those long drives across North America. How a man who's pushing 90 years of age this this coming April manages to squeeze his way into those tight spaces at night, I will never know. But staying as young at heart as Willie has over the years has clearly kept him flexible. In addition to ensuring the band always makes it to their next venue, the bus also acts as a hangout spot for when after the show is over. In fact, fellow country singer Toby Keith was allegedly inspired to write, I will never smoke weed with Willie again after a particularly long night hanging out right here. As for whether or not Willie will ever park his tour bus for good and move into either Luck Ranch or his home in Maui full time. While thinking about how long he's been doing this, I think that Willie Nelson will probably continue performing until the wheels come off. But hey, at least he's got a couple spectacular pieces of property to retire to if he ever does decide to hang up his old guitar strap. In the meantime, that's gonna bring this Willie Nelson house tour to a close. But before you head out, ask yourselves this one question. Would you rather own your very own West Western frontier town, or would you prefer to spend your money on a nine hole golf course instead? Sorry, you're not Willie, so you can't have both. Let me know your choice in the comments below, as well as your thoughts on this legend's homes. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. My name's Kara, and follow me on Instagram to chat burger. I'll see you all in another video. Bye.